We're accustomed to MRP problems being literally very large problems on the page because an MRP problem has to provide a bill of materials, current inventory records, and a master production schedule, the three inputs of MRP. This problem, though, challenges us in that MRP problems are usually large, but not necessarily. This particular problem, let's take a look, is a full MRP problem. A finished good A consists of two child items, one B and one C. Ooh, that is our bill of materials. Right there. Lead time on each of these items is one week and 10 of each of these three items is available in inventory currently. That is our current inventory records. How much of each item should be ordered and when should it be ordered? That is answered by material requirements planning so that 50 A's might be finished in three weeks. That is the master production schedule. So inside this one very short paragraph, you actually have each of the three inputs of MRP. You are all set to calculate an MRP plan. And you can see that um, there are some empty record frames suggested on the note frame here. And it's mostly just to save me from having to draw straight lines because I'm not very good at drawing straight lines. Anyway, okay, let's get set up. Now, first off, okay, there is a bill of materials inside this very short paragraph. It's helpful though to sketch it. A finished good A consists of two child items, one B and one C. Okay, there's something called an A that's made out of a B and a C. Now, the next step in MRP is to set up the records. That means I need one record for each one of these items. Oh, that's why there are three of these empty tables. Now, I should label the rows on these tables. Let's see. The top row is always gross requirements, and I'm just abbreviating instead of writing out requirements. That's going to be true for each one of these records. Gross requirements for B, gross requirements for C. Let's see, the second line will be the planned, planned order receipts. Well, I didn't really get it to fit in there. You know what I'm going to do for B? This is P for planned, O for order. I'm going to abbreviate. That looks better. And then the same thing here. It's the same level. P for plan, O for order. Receipts. The third line with the strange little box, extra box to the left of the planning periods, that's the available balance. I'm just going to write available. Stated as ending inventory. Available. Available at the end of that period. And then the last line in each one of the records is the planned order releases. How much to order and when you order it. Well, seeing as how it didn't work out fitting it for planned order receipts with my handwriting, I'm going to abbreviate again. P for plan, O for ordered. This is releases. This is the actual plan. P for planned, O for order, releases. P for planned, O for order, releases. Oh, okay, now speaking of just like getting the records set up, there are three planning periods mentioned. Might as well label them. I'm just getting set up. And also, Useful information about these items. The lead time on each is one week. Okay, I'm not determining anything here. I'm just organizing the information around the tables. Oh, and there are 10 of each of these items available in inventory currently. That belongs there. That's what the strange extra little box is to the left of the planning periods and each one of the records. That's where you store how much you're starting with, how much you have right now. 
Oh, all right. Now, to get started on an MRP problem, oh, one last piece of information that's said in the problem that needs to be entered somewhere here on the records that really actually gets us started. That's the so-called master production schedule. What we want to achieve. Okay, here it's just a sentence. 50 A's should be finished in three weeks. Little note to self. 50. 50 in three weeks. Where that, that came from right there. All right. Now, we have completed the step of getting set up. Every All the information is staged. Next step. Fill out all the records on level zero or calculate the planned order releases for all level zero items, which is the same thing, calculate the planned order releases, the bottom line, as just fill out the record. Oh, level zero items, right. Level zero's at the top. Level zero, well, there's only one thing at the top, that's A. Oh, yes, next step, fill out the record for A. Okay. Fill out the record for A. Let's see what's going on now. There's 10 in stock and there needs to be these 50 finished because they're going to be shipped out in the third week. That means for the first two weeks, we just carry those 10 in stock. We just carry those 10 in stock so we have them with us going into this third week. We are 50 minus 10, 40 shy. They didn't say anything about lot sizes. That means I am free to neatly arrange to receive 40 right when I need them. The 10 plus the 40 will make up the 50 and out the door. And that will wipe inventory out to nothing. Now, this is when I need to receive it. To finish the record, drop down to the bottom of the li bottom line, check the lead time one week, count one week forward. In order to receive the 40 right when I need them, I need to remember to order 40 in the second week in order to receive it in the third week. Oh, uh, so actually I've already partially answered the question that was posed in the paragraph above. Now, but that's just for item A. Okay, note to self, order 40 item A in the second week. Fine. Now, what about item B and C? Oh, what's the next step with MRP? Once you filled out all the records on level zero, well, there was just this one, then the bottom line of the parent is passed into the top line of the child's record. The planned order releases of the parent right here are passed into the gross requirements line of the child's record because you're making arrangements to be able to work on those 40 that you're going to request in the second week. Well, at any rate, the bottom line of the parent is passed into the top line of the child's record multiplied by the number of children required to make one parent. This just appears to be one to one. So we can just take this 40 and pass it right straight down to the top line of B's record. When we request 40A be produced, 40B need to be ready to be consumed, right? Because they go into it. And then the, actually this same 40C is also a child. So this same 40 goes into the top line of C's record as well. All right, once the planned order releases of the parent are passed down to the gross requirements line of the child records, what's the next step? Fill out all the records on the next level. In this particular problem, there only is one other level with B and C on it. Right, now we fill out the records for B and C. Okay, in the case of B, we have 10. We have 10, so we'll have 10 with us going into the second week in which 40 need to be ready to go, leave. Um, that means 10 minus 40, we are short 30, so we will schedule to receive those 30 that we need right then. That means that we've wiped out inventory because we used those 10. Now, if we need to receive 30 in the second week, then check the lead time one week, drop down to the bottom line and move forward one, ah, uh, note to self, that means that since it's going to take a week for them to be created or delivered, we need to order 30 the week before in the first week. With C, very similar. Matter of fact, almost identical. We have the 10, so we'll need another 30 to provide the 40, which is going to wipe out inventory. Oh, same lead time, so 30 needs to be requested in the first week. There. Now, what I've outlined in yellow actually is the answer. 
we could summarize here since we have room on the page because what was the question? How much of each item should be ordered and when should it be ordered so that the master production schedule is met? Answer, order 40 A's in second week and 30 B's and 30 C's in first week. I did nothing more than simply write out what we already knew and you could see that I had boxed in in yellow. That is how much to order and when should we order of all of these items such that, you know, why? Such that we'll have 50 ready to go of finished good A in the third week.